Oh, welcome back my gardening friends. Well, uh, the rats are still visiting uh, my sweet corn and we s tried several ways of trying to stop them. So let's go and have a little look. My holy smelly socks, uh, no action whatsoever. The bottles uh, do seem to be uh, working as well. Get the odd wasp uh, crawling in. But you might be able to see there the sweet corn seems to be swelling out really well at the top. So that looks promising. We tried um, some garlic water. Now these are the two that we tried the garlic water with and uh, the rats like garlic. So I quickly put uh, a bottle top over that one. At a later date we used these little nets. That's what the wife gets her knitting wool in and we pulled it nice and tight across uh, each one and uh, there's no activity there. Another holy sock, unwashed. Uh, they don't seem to be active there. The washed socks, they're okay. No action there either. More and more bottle tops. We say bottle tops, tops of bottles with the bottoms cut out. All the ones that haven't uh, had any protection have uh, had a, a bit of a nibble. We tried some mint. Unfortunately, that didn't work. But you can see the uh, devastation there. The wasps are in there as well. But where we've put uh, the bottle tops on, and you can grab the tassels and bring those through, but I don't want to harvest them all at once. There's some more form in there. We need to uh, put a bottle on those. Everything that's uncovered has been targeted now. If I hadn't have spotted the start in that previous video, I think I'll create a playlist, I'll put it on the end. We would have uh, lost everything. We'll grab one of the corns that's been damaged and we'll see what we can salvage. I did have some comments about rats and we should throw everything away. But remember, rats and mice crawl everywhere, not just on your vegetables, on your cans of pop, everything else. Anybody that feels they are susceptible to uh, Viral's disease, etc., which we all are, must take those precautions. Good hygiene. But we know rats and mice are everywhere. We will be revealing one of the ones uh, with the bottle tops, the bottles, because we did get a comment on saying. We might cook them in the sunshine. So we'll grab two today and see what we've got. But socks and the bottles seem to work well. And those nets as well. Failure would be the mint and a failure.
failure on the uh, garlic uh, water. We'll let that helicopter disappear. So let's start off with the one that's been uh, devastated. And as you can see there, they've uh, taken all the uh, corn out. This is the fun bit. I try not to touch the uh, the corn with my hands because uh, this they've been had by the uh, the rats. But that does look uh, rather nice, and the rats have probably run across this and weed on it. The tassels have nicely died back. We've had the bottle on. As you can see, every one of these is attached to uh, the corn. That's why we want to get uh, nice pollination of those uh, tassels or dangly bits. But that does uh, look some really nice sweet corn. It doesn't look like it's been damaged by the sun through the bottle, so I'll have to look through my sock door. I don't really like throwing my socks away because uh, even if they've got a hole in, you can always just turn them round the other way. But that's a success, and hopefully, uh, we can. Uh, salvage some of the other sweet corn there's nothing wrong with that we've cut all the bits off and uh, by the time it's been in the steamer there'll be nothing wrong with that whether there's rat urine on it or not but we shan't be eating any more raw just in case I'll be leaving the ones on that the uh, rats have already had. While they're feasting on those, they'll be leaving my carrots alone. Uh, anybody who watches me regular will know that uh, we had uh, issues uh, with the carrots, with them uh, having a field day. And as you can see, we still got extra nutrients here, so there's no point me doing anything with this bed. We'll just keep reusing this bed until we stop getting any uh, of these uh, that fork, but uh, we've had some really good, uh, and that's like a big top, so maybe this is one's, uh, no, we've got another good one. I've had a few split, etc. but when the uh, rats get to them, they do make a mess, and I've had rats dig up from below, and I'm wondering why the tops have died. I've lifted the tops up, and there's nothing left of the carrot. They took the lot. But eating a lot underground. I know people have trouble with squirrels and other rodents wherever you will uh, live in the world, but we just got to do our best to protect them. That's why uh, this is netted at all times, but it's not actually physically fastened down because I'm crawled. Uh, I'm actually underneath it. But you can see there, plenty of carrots to last right through. Hopefully, to about April 2024. If, uh... oh, oh yeah, don't want that to do that. Oh, it's broke off, never mind. And uh, we'll be protecting them like we did last year by uh, cutting the tops off as soon as they start dying back. Mulch them up to stop the frost getting to them but this this year we'll be uh, mounding it up 
and uh, pop in a bit of um, plastic or cardboard over the top to stop the water getting to them because I did have some rot and it's been very wet this year so we've already had some split. It's okay uh, netting everything up but uh, you can't always get to everything. These are my uh, Brussels sprouts. Uh, these are the, uh, I think it's the Red Bull. Oh, uh, yeah, Red Bull. I need to get in here and uh, tidy everything up. Uh, the Brussels have just started to form on the Crispus uh, F1s. We've got butterflies, we've got moths in here. It's okay netting everything up, but if you trap any of the chrysalis in there, they escape, can't get out, and they lay the eggs and caterpillars everywhere. Uh, some of these now need uh, supporting. Uh, broccoli's finished, so a lot of compost in here to uh, reveal. I hope this has helped a few people. There's no harm in uh, putting the socks on quite early, getting the tassels out. And on one or two, I have actually pulled the uh, tassels through. It's a pity we have to go this far to protect our crops. But it's well worth it when you can see what I've revealed uh, earlier on in this video. These are the uh, cauliflowers that uh, we planted. At risk with the butterflies. But uh, they do seem to be doing uh, really well. And as you can see there, we're getting the odd rain shower at the moment. It's August the 26th, 2023. The birds have had the uh, Sun King sunflowers. Another one there. And uh, more forming. This Mongolian giant fell foul of uh, the winds about a month, six weeks ago. This one survived. I have given it some support and if this keeps, uh, I wouldn't say growing, but can't, can't see the screen properly. But the granddaughter's entry for the sunflower, a sunflower at Malvern, if it lasts a few more weeks. I planted some surplus orange banana tomatoes. They say you should never plant anything with sunflowers and they're absolutely right. One little experiment that did prove a point. This is this year's parsnip bed. We'll be harvesting some of those in November. There's some looking a little bit sad, maybe too much water. This is the bed that we'll be planting the parsnips in April next year, but I will need to rejuvenate the manure layer in the bottom. I'll be doing that uh, in September. That will give the manure runoff liquid a chance uh, to soak in and then the parsnips will send the tap root down and down and down, pick up all the nutrients and uh, give me a nice parsnip. And this is where I get my manure liquid plant food from. Now if you have a load of manure delivered to your growing spaces and it sits there for a while, all the liquid will drain off into the ground. But I'm clever enough to pop it into the bottom of an IBC that was damaged. And that's 
beautiful stuff and I've already got 30 odd uh, litres there I'm trying to keep it separate from my old manure runoff this is probably three years old we didn't collect any manure during the uh, pandemic a comfrey has been emptied into this barrel this is the one that we mixed with water comfrey goes into the water and we then collect the liquid of trying to empty out the nettle plant food because everything is collapsing my future plans are to remove everything from here even the hedgehog retreat these galvanized tanks are now getting holes in them so this area will be opened up and this will be an ideal area in the shade of the holly bush Ooh. please don't sting me mr wasp this will be an ideal area to plant some lettuce in the shade because that hedge there is facing north hiding the sunshine from me so the manure runoff bin will eventually be sitting on top of these water barrels so I can just collect it and pour it in. From here. Just an update on the compost that we collected. We did a little short of an area where I thought there was probably 10,000 litres of cannabis compost dumped. What you can see here across here around this corner is around about if there's 20 litres in a bag there's 3,600 uh, 3, if there's 25 litres there's 4,000 something so I'm just going to say there's uh, 3,800 litres very small pots that they were growing it in the, wheat, uh, the roots were growing well at the bottom but not so much in the middle there it is there with a little bit of perlite in them that's what I'm calling the rubbish and then this is what it looks like when it's uh, been sifted and anybody that says you shouldn't be using it you shouldn't be using it how much would have that cost me to buy so I can add this to the board. <clears throat> We've got 800 litres in July with the clay balls in. I wasn't desperate, but I wanted to try clay balls. And then we've got 3,800 uh, this month. Which takes us up to uh, just over 38,000 litres of found uh, compost uh, from around about 2014 when I found my little pot of 20 litres I think I'm addicted this one's called Mandamu this one's called Little Willy This one's called uh, Jason, with his uh, ever-increasing uh, erection down there. And uh, this one's uh, Colleen. And Colleen is now developing uh, some uh, little bits there. Looking good for Malvern. And, and uh, of course, not forgetting Val's melons. If you like the content, please give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. 
please leave me a comment give the comments a thumbs up join in with the comments and if you like the content of this video why not consider subscribing happy gardening to you all till next time my friends try for now